It is said that life is a series of choices, and making choices is not always easy because you don't know what awaits you next or what kind of world you will lead if you go down that path. Because you never know what's ahead, you sometimes make bad choices, which hurts your heart and leaves flaws in your life. But that's okay. Through that experience, we learn one more way to make better choices. So don't hesitate when faced with various choices today. Just believe in yourself and make a decision. No matter what path unfolds, we will be able to get through somehow. So let's kick off today's hour on Radio Clock with Groovy Rooms, Yes or No, featuring Ho Yun Jin of Le Seraphim and Crush. Come on in, besties. Welcome back to Radio Clock Besties. It is Monday, March 25th, 2024, and I'm your host, DJ Ashley. Uh, I hope you guys had a great weekend, and I hope the first day of the week is treating you well so far. 
Um, I'm gonna go straight into a song request from one of our listeners, but before I do that, I do have an announcement. It's been a while since we had one of these, but Sirius XM service of Arirang Radio will be terminated on March 31st. So you can continue to listen to radio on www.arirangradio.com or on the Arirang Radio application or on the YouTube live stream. If you've always done so, you can continue to do so. Thank you. And our message today, where'd it go? Oh, it's it's levitating. It's the middle of the mailbox. Okay. Um, it is from Benny, who says, Hello, Ash, besties, and Radio Clock team. At this point, um, all of our besties are supporting you on your life goals. And I will always support your journey no matter what. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Anyway, I hope this spring would be a lovely one entering this season now that we can talk about the cherry blossoms and so on. Actually, I was walking here and I I saw some popcorns blooming on the tree. So, yeah, spring is here. There was only one tree that I saw, um, but the cherry blossoms have started blooming. Um, he requested Universe 2023 Remaster by DKZ. And the reason we are so lucky that our Radio Clock Universe is growing and growing every day. Have a great day. That's a really cute reason. All right, so we're going to listen to the song requested by Benny, Universe 2023 Remaster by DKZ. And I'll be back with our guest for Tea Time Monday. They give me one flashlight, try to go Neji my alright. Then make a poke and put an in the cut the baby. Listen up. Morica put the bike guys so much kick it on the wall. She in a silhouette. Don't never mind so like a hey. Don't come back on a sungan jota. I go baby. Slow down. Sumi, kappa, why? As a moon, do do the video ops on our young, you're late, so 24-7. Cute chick down, we know what you wanna do. Just tell me right now. Chat chicken, put the dark catch, soon chicken, and not all lie. Oh, my Juliet. Juliet. Don't never mind, so like a hey. Don't come back, and then soon, gun your time. I got a baby.
Download the Arirang Radio application. Type in A-R-I-R-A-N-G. Arirang Radio on your app store. Download it and listen to Arirang Radio. 88.7 in Jeju City. 88.1 in Seogukpo City. 101.9 in the Daejeon area. Channel 144 on Sirius XM in the U.S. Arirang Radio. Tune in, Arirang Radio. Would you like a cup of tea? This is Tea Time Monday. This is Tea Time Monday, where we invite guests from all different fields and get to know them better. Today, we have a very special guest in the studio who we would not have had the chance to meet at all if the timing didn't work out because she is not active in Korea. And I think this is why timing is so important. Uh, maybe some of you guys have seen this person's work. She's a best-selling author who has written a trilogy of children's fantasy novels, which is loved by readers all over the world. We are with all Author Gracie Kim, welcome. Ah, thank you. Hello. <laughs> First of all, thank you for being here. Can you briefly introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Gracie Kim. My Korean name is Kim Sung Eun. I call myself a Koei, so a Korean Kiwi. Oh. Uh, and yeah, so New Zealand is home. Uh, and I'm here just for a week on the invitation of the New Zealand Embassy. Wow. So, yeah. I love your accent, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I love yours. So, mine? <laughs> yeah. What? No. Yours is so much cooler. No. Um, but you were born and raised in New Zealand then? No. So I was born in Korea. Oh. And I was three when our family immigrated. So I have been in New Zealand since I was three. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you come back to Korea often? You know, we used to uh -huh. when we were younger um, and then of, of late, not so much. The, so the last time I was here was in 2018. Oh, My okay. husband and I came as part of our honeymoon. Oh, um, nice. And then the first time, yeah, since, since then. Since then. You mm -hmm. said you were here by the invitation of the New Zealand embassy. That's right. Is there like an event going on? Uh, so it's a bit of a long story. Okay. Um, <laughs> I used to be a New Zealand diplomat, and so oh. my old manager, uh, when I was posted in the embassy in Beijing, mm -hmm. she is now the New Zealand ambassador to Korea. Oh, wow. And so she enjoyed the books, and she mm -hmm. said, hey, why don't we make this a, a tour? So it's an author diplomacy tour um, oh, wow. in Korea. In mm. Korea for a week. For a week. Are you going to other places after? We're actually going on holiday. So my husband and my four-year-old daughter are here with me. Uh -huh. uh, so after the week of work, we're actually going to go down to Jeju-do <gasps> for <Nice>. holidays. Wow. <laughs> Hopefully with flowers. Yeah. Hopefully. It, yeah. it has gotten a lot warmer. Mm -hmm. How is the weather in New Zealand right now? End of summer. End of summer. Yeah. Ah. So we've been going to beaches <gasps> and... Nice. You know, shorts and t-shirt. And oh. then we came here and we bought all the jackets. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. the timing was perfect, I feel like, because even if you just came like like a week ago, it, it was like a lot colder. Oh, but really? Yes, it's oh, very okay. warm now. So cool. good timing. Um, I know you're only here for a week, but thank you for making time for Radio Clock. Oh, we are so honored to have me. you today. Have you heard about Arirang Radio or TV? Oh, yeah. Have yeah, you yeah, watched yeah. It's it? everywhere in New Zealand. I mean, really? it's everywhere in the world, but um, also in New Zealand, of course. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> have yeah. you seen this show in particular? No. Uh, no, okay. sorry. I well, haven't. I have to be honest. <laughs> Can I lie? No, no. It's no. fine. It's the timing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we get into our interview, we have prepared mm -hmm. some tea for you. Yes. Which tea did you select? I chose the Porita. Porita, mm -hmm. barley tea. Classic. Uh, I chose. I don't remember what I chose. <laughs> what was it? Um, yeah, some, some herb tea. Yes. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. It just says herb tea. This doesn't have the name on it. Anyways, all right. It's going to be a good time. Mm -hmm. Looking is. forward to it. Uh, so when you landed at Incheon Airport this time with your husband and your daughter, how did it feel? 
honestly, it felt surreal mm. because it's been a while since we've been back. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my, oh, sorry, it's my husband's second time, and but it's my dance. four-year-old daughter's first, first time. time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that was really exciting to share it with her. Yeah. Although the moment we arrived in the airport, it was so late. Um, she was just passed out mm-hmm. on me. I was carrying her. So she didn't see a lot, um, but I felt really... Honestly, I felt a little moved because Aww. she's mixed race Korean. Mm-hmm. And so to for her to be able to experience one of her motherlands mm-hmm. is really special. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I oh. hope she enjoys it and yeah. she gets to see a lot. She's, she's going to love it. it. Yeah, she's loving gonna it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so before you came, did you make a list of places to check out or restaurants to go to? So the thing is with having a four-year-old child mm-hmm. is that they are boss, right? So True. whatever they want to do on their schedule is kind of what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we we were definitely planning things around her. Mm-hmm. But I have to say the, the one thing I really wanted, two things that I really wanted to do, one was get socks. Get socks. Korean <laughs> socks are the best. <laughs> like it's just the thing. Yes. Um, I wanted to get socks. Uh, and the other thing was I wanted solongtang. Uh-huh. Oh, solongtang. Mm-hmm. Do they not have solongtang in New Zealand? We have it. Okay. But it's not the same. It's not the kaktugi is not the oh, same. Oh, the kaktugi is the mm-hmm. most important part mm-hmm. when you're eating solongtang. <laughs> mm-hmm. <gasps> so did you get... Oh, yes. We did that. <gasps> you did? Oh, yes. Yeah. And the kaktugi was... Perfect. Perfect. Mm. You should buy some and take it back. I know. <laughs> I should. I should. <laughs> so you can have your, you know, you can be reminded of your motherland mm, every yeah. once in a while. Um, so those who are already fans of Gracie Kim through her work may know her well, but I want to introduce the author to more people. So before the show, we asked her to fill out like a questionnaire. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, the Korean way of creating a profile. A profile. Uh-huh. So um, we asked you for first your birthday. When is your birthday? Yes, my birthday is the 16th of August, 1986. August 16th. Mm-hmm. August 16th. Oh, I think my friend's birthday is on August oh, 16th. Really? Oh, really? You know who else has a birthday at then? Ooh. Madonna. Madonna. <laughs> yeah. Both queens. Oh, yeah. Both queens have birthdays oh, yeah. on <laughs> August 16th. Wow. Um, and your nationality is? is New Zealander. New Zealander. Mm. New Zealander. <laughs> um, when did you first begin writing? You know, it's pretty recent. Mm. I first started writing properly in 2017. Mm. So it's very recent, except I did write a story when I was 11, Uh um, very short story. Uh, It was called The Multicolored Club, and it was essentially a mashup of the Babysitter's Club um, book series Uh meets the Spice Girls. Wow. Okay. It was all the (laughs) things I loved at that time. Um, It was like a few pages, but that was my first ever story. But then I actually completely went away from writing until I was a, you know, an adult. So, yeah. Whoa. Were you still reading books though? Or you just... Honestly, I, I read nonfiction books. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to love self-help books, self-development books. Mm. Um, but fiction and fantasy, I really just forgot it existed. And I loved it. I devoured these stories. And then I just, you know, life happened mm. and work happened mm-hmm. and studies happened. And I forgot yeah. until I became an adult, until like 2017. Wow. Yeah. Okay, we're going to ask you more in detail about that in a little bit. Um, but if you could choose three words to describe you, what would it be? <laughs> what would they be? <laughs> okay, so my first word would be stubborn. Stubborn? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm very stubborn. Okay. Um, I think another word would be impatient. These are all negative. No, they're not. <laughs> they can be. Okay, they okay. can be, but okay. they can be good. Um, and then the last word I would describe myself is hungry. I'm hungry. Almost always hungry. Mm, mm. Like like physically or like? I guess in all ways, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're hungry for more? Like Yes, in okay. all ways, I think. In oh. food also. Wow. Uh, but yeah, hungry for life. So th- mm. these are, I feel like these are all kind of related to work, mm-hmm. stubborn about like the stories or work you may write and impatient. Mm-hmm. So you want to like hurry up and write. Are you good with due dates? Actually, you know, that's a really good point. They seem like they're work related words, mm-hmm. but actually I think I'm like that in all life. aspects. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. But you know, the thing about these words is 
they initially do appear negative, but mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think another way of saying stubborn is dedicated, maybe, mm. you know, and maybe another way to say impatient is... I don't know. I think that maybe that is just impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so if you are like impatient, it may not be easy raising a child, <gasps> is it? Oh my goodness. Did you just read my heart? <laughs> yeah, it is actually the hardest job I have ever had being mm -hmm. a mother. Mm -hmm. um, it gives me such appreciation of obviously my own parents, but of all parents. Mm. It is the most... Um, tireless and thankless job, but one where the rewards are sky high. <gasps> Does yeah. it get easier as the years go by? Yeah, well, you know, different people seem to enjoy different parts of motherhood. Some mm -hmm. people love the baby stage and yeah. some people like, you know, it, when they get older. I have loved seeing my daughter get older because oh. she has a personality hey. and she's got sass. Um, <laughs> so it's been lovely to see her develop. Oh, that's yeah. adorable. Mm. Um, if you could choose your three favorite things, what would they be? Okay, so I find favorite thing questions incredibly hard because, yeah. like I said, I'm hungry. And so mm -hmm. I like lots of things. Mm -hmm. So choosing favorites is kind of hard. But I would say um, I love my family. Mm -hmm. um, I love my Kindle because I love reading. So mm. an ebook reader. And I love sleeping. Sleeping. Mm -hmm. mm, family, Kindle, sleeping. That sounds. <laughs> like the best <laughs> yeah sounds so, like a cozy life right yeah <laughs> so when you have days off are you usually at home mm. like a homebody because just yeah we are i mean like i said before a four-year-old child is boss mm -hmm. so yeah we try to um we try to get out a lot mm. and you know expand her mind and her horizons and things but we do love being home Oh. Yeah. Does she also like enjoy? Does she also enjoy reading? <gasps> oh, she loves reading and she loves books. She actually That's comes good. home every day from daycare mm -hmm. writing books, like little. She can't write properly yet, but the yeah. teachers write what she dictates. Oh. And she she draws the pictures and she's got these elaborate stories. Um, and she jokes that um, she is much more prolific than I than am. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "Mummy, you take so long to write books, but I write a book a day." <laughs> oh my gosh! I wish yeah. you. Brought her today. I want to meet her. I wish we could interview her. Okay. Uh, since you have lived in New Zealand for a very long time, mm -hmm. is there any place in New Zealand that you want to recommend our listeners if we ever get to visit? Uh, I want to go so bad. But uh, have you been? No. Oh, oh, you'll have been. to come. I want to. Um, New Zealand has the most beautiful nature. I know. Yeah. I and so nature. I would recommend any beach, um, mm. whether it's the white sand beaches or the black sand beaches. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. Um, and one place that's coming to mind right now are the Waitomo Caves. Waitomo um, caves. And they are caves where there are beautiful glowworms. Mm -hmm. And glow so you worms. go in and it looks like the night sky. Like it looks Whoa. like stars in the sky, but they're actually little bugs. What? Yeah, and, and they, they don't harm spark. you. They're just no, <gasps> not at all. The most Ooh. gentle creatures, and they're always there. They're always there, so you have to be very quiet. And you can ride like little boats <gasps> down the the you know the river canal. Yeah. Um. Well, not within the cave, but uh -huh. um. Yeah, you go in, and it's just it feels almost otherworldly, like you're in space. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> I want to go so bad. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. Um, and the last question on the list was, what, what is your goal for 2024? <sighs> this sounds like a very like end of the interview question. Yeah, but it it's does not. rather. <laughs> also a very big question. I know. Um, you know, I have a new series coming out next Ooh, year. Uh -huh. So I think 2024 for me is a time of preparation. So mm. I'm going to work hard to, to make the book the best it can be um, and plan, maybe even write the sequel to that mm. to be prepared. So, mm. yeah. All right. Mm. I will be looking forward to that. Um, but we're going to take a song break at this time. I heard you wanted to listen to a song by H.O.T. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, Please. which song? <laughs> I actually said any song because I was such a huge fan. Really? I loved Kangta. Uh, my room was full of posters. When you were in Kangta. New Zealand? <laughs> yes, growing wow. up. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you still had access to like K-pop and everything, but H.O.T. was your favorite group? Favorite. All-time favorite group. All right, mm. so I hope this song makes you happy. We'll listen to H.O.T.'s Hengbok Happiness. <gasps>
You guys are listening to Radio Clock, and today we have a guest. She went from a diplomat to a best-selling author. We're joined by Gracie Kim, who's writing a new chapter in her life. So you have various titles to your name, Gracie Kim, but the title that many people are interested in is author. So like we mentioned before, you created a children's novel trilogy series and became a New York Times best-selling author. Do you remember when you like got the call and you were like, they told you, you're a New York Times bestselling author? Oh, uh, it honestly, I've kind of blanked it out because <laughs> it, <laughs> too much emotion. Yeah. <laughs> um, it wasn't actually that part that actually I remember so deeply. I mm-hmm. remember the time, the day that I found out I was about to get published. Oh. It was the same day I was getting a scan to mm. confirm that I was pregnant. And oh my so gosh. it was this day where I felt like I was suddenly having a, a book baby and a human <gasps> baby. You're right. Yeah, it was a big day. Wow. Mm. That, that, that sounds like a huge day. It was. Lots of things to celebrate. Yeah. Um, and the genre is, like I said, children's fantasy novel, mm. right? And I heard you were inspired by Korean folk tales. Yeah, so growing up, my harmony and my parents mm-hmm. used to tell us lots of Korean folk tales. Mm. You know, like if you don't behave, the tokebi is gonna come and eat you up, and um, <laughs> kishin are coming. Um, <clears throat> so all those stories I loved, uh, but it was only until I was older that I realized that these beautiful and interesting stories that mm. I had grown up with, I never saw anywhere, and. And not only that, I had read as a child Mm -hmm. so many books. Like Mm -hmm. I loved books. And I had never seen anyone like me who Mm -hmm. looked like me from my culture in books. Mm -hmm. And I started to believe that we were invisible, that we didn't deserve to be the heroes of our own books or of our own life stories. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it was really important to me to be able to share these stories of ours, these rich stories, Mm -hmm. but in a way that only I could tell them, I felt. Um, And that's how, yeah, the, it came about really so it's like a combination of all the different folk tales and korean stories that you heard as a child yeah bits and pieces of various stories mm-hmm. but my spin on them mm-hmm. um and then uh with a korean diasporic spin <gasps> because the main character lives in the u.s yes. and so they're korean american kids um with these folk tales from their culture and heritage but in today's modern world in today's modern way so there's lots of plays on technology playing a part um this is not a spoiler but there's like an app for example to connect with ghosts wow. <laughs> where you can swipe to connect with ghosts things like that so um yeah it's i guess my own take Uh on our traditional korean stories wow and Mm. we have one of the books here that she was kind enough to sign for me and gift me the last fallen star is this the first one yes star is the first first one and then book two is the last fallen moon and the last one is the last fallen realm it's the yeah. Gifted Clans trilogy. So these characters are like gifted, right? Some of them. They are. I saw they were in mm-hmm. LA. They're living in LA. The first book is based in LA. Mm-hmm. Each book is actually set in a different American ah, city. Oh, nice. Uh, but yes, they are gifted. So it's this idea that uh, the Korean American community in mm-hmm. LA, in the first <laughs> book anyway, mm-hmm. are secretly gifted witches. And wow. so they have magic and they have different clans. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And the second one is in another city. Which city is that? So the second book is actually based in the spirit realm. Oh. But the spirit realm, strangely, looks just like New York. Oh, hey. <laughs> so you'll be able to, to oh. recognize things there. Oh, mm. and then the third one? The third one is based in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Ooh, mm. fun. Yeah. I mean, you're such a, I mean, the way you're describing the books right now, too, mm. I'm like, I'm like intrigued ah. um, but you know children's books I heard it's kind of difficult to write from an adult's point of view because obviously you know we know too much about the mm. world now you know we don't have that sweet innocent souls anymore mm. um, so I heard that it's harder to write children's book for now, um, adults but how did you decide to go into children's books I love this question <laughs> uh, can I say I think it's because I never grew up <laughs> <laughs> that's good um, I feel like for a while, I forgot that, mm. you know, like I, when I forgot about reading in mm-hmm. books, I kind of forgot that magic is 
around. Mm. And when I started reading again, actually what, what ended up happening, it's a long story, but the short version is I almost went blind. I'm actually partially sighted now. I don't see very well. Mm -hmm. Um, And during this recovery time after my eye surgery, I was totally sightless. And I spent a lot of time in darkness thinking. Um, And I rediscovered during this time of quiet and Mm -hmm. darkness the presence of magic in our day-to-day life. Mm -hmm. I just think magic is everywhere, Mm -hmm. um, all around us and people and nature, but also inside us. Um, And I think that's what I possibly may have rekindled through my books and so it's fantasy but it's contemporary fantasy it's today's right. world when 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 kids read this mm-hmm. they'll recognize the right. world but magic is overlaid on top of our world oh have you mm. ever met readers who you know loved your book what what do they say what do they say to you usually oh it's my favorite part of the job meeting readers mm-hmm. um it overwhelms me, actually, because uh, there's uh, in, in my head, there's two types of readers. There are Korean readers mm-hmm. um, and, and non-Korean readers. And for the Korean readers in particular, being able to see themselves, especially diasporic Korean kids, um, they say they feel seen, they feel identified, and they feel proud. Mm-hmm. Um, one even said that uh, it changed her life, and I, I felt so moved by that. I had one reader, not a child, obviously, but uh-huh. an adult reader who actually got a tattoo of <gasps> the gifted mark, which is what appears on the wrist when they do magic uh-huh. um, in real life. Wow. <laughs> Just blowing away. <gasps> yeah. Whoa. I mean, um, and of all readers, I feel like your daughter might be the most objective one. <laughs> Does she say anything about the book? I know she's still too young to read yeah. this, but... Have you ever read One this? day uh-huh. when she reads it, I am very curious to hear what she thinks. She's quite opinionated, actually, so she probably will have lots of thoughts about how I should change the story. <laughs> um, but I can't wait to have, yeah, have, have the opportunity to share the yeah. story with her. And mm. by then, you'll probably have you'll most likely have more books out. So yeah, I hope yeah, so. she's going to have more books to enjoy. Mm. Um, and, you you know, like you mentioned, you, you have fans who love this book and series so much they got the tattoo. Mm. And I heard this was also made into a TV series. So it hasn't, but oh. it could be. Oh. So it has been optioned uh, by the Disney Channel to mm. be turned oh. into a TV show. Oh. Um, but we'll just see. These things are out of the author's hands. So I have done my part. Uh-huh. So we'll just cross our fingers and hope maybe one day it could happen. That would be incredible. That if would these, be insane. Yeah, if it came to life like that. Yeah. And then it would Ooh. be, you know, more Asian actors playing exactly. the roles. Exactly. So more representation. Yes. <gasps> Fingers crossed. Mm. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, and I heard uh, you received a lot of awards <laughs> aside from the New York Best Talent Best Selling Bestseller as well. Um, can you tell us? You know, it's your time to brag. <laughs> Feel free to brag and tell us everything. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to brag. Um, I think awards are wonderful because mm. uh, writing is so solitary. Mm, you know, I true. usually my work is to be in my pajamas at home with my computer. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting an award is an incredible validation right. of what I do that I'm seen. But really, for me, the most greatest award is meeting readers and mm. getting their feedback. Like when I get fan mail, fan letters. No words to describe that. That is all I need. Yeah. Oh, that is sweet. That's <laughs> <laughs> the truth. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to continue after a song break. Let's go mm-hmm. listen to a song by Hyun Sang. This is A Book of Love. <gasps> So take a breath, take your time, and take my hand. Tonga so get no gunga, a pago in lava, good or tedo genchana, a naming girl, a pago, Najimion, get and go ya. Maybe you try, maybe you cry, maybe it hurts. 
생각해보면 지나가버린 것은 추억이란 선물이 되어주고 또 하루를 살아가게 할 힘이 될 거야 Maybe you try, maybe you cry, maybe it hurts 이 모든 게 잠깐일 뿐인 거야 We'll be alright, we'll be alright author from New Zealand, Gracie Kim. Uh, she is also a mother and a wife. And you said the, like you mentioned before, it's very solitary. Do you work usually from home then? Yeah, I do work from home. Sometimes I go to a local cafe, uh-huh. um, but often I work from home. Mm. And then your daughter's there with you. Oh no, she okay. goes to daycare. Okay, if, if I she was, was home, say, I could not yeah, work. Yeah, no. you write one sentence, yes. and then you have to go like cater to. Her. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you ha- you do have some time to focus on your work. Okay, mm. that is very important. Um, these days, as much as you write your books, do you also have time to read books? I love reading Mm. yeah you know uh writers sometimes talk about having writer's block Mm. not being able to write anything so i think that when somebody faces writer's block Mm -hmm. it just means they're trying to create output without enough input so i think about it like having a creative bucket Uh and i have to read um and not just read like i have to watch content listen to music and songs Mm. in order to fill my creative bucket and as long as it's full i have material to use and pull Mm. out for my work um so i read a lot i love reading i love reading oh wow well i wanted to ask you about some of your favorite books okay you wanted to recommend first of all what is your favorite genre i don't have one I love everything. Everything. I think there is something to learn and to appreciate from all genres and also all age categories. Uh Like I think children's books are as much for adults. Mm. Sometimes perhaps more. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) You know, adults need to read children's Mm. books. Um, So I love it all. Okay. Mm. Do you have like an all-time favorite author? Again, nope. I just love so many. I think it's like flavor of the month anytime. Mm. At one point, I will have a different changing author, different changing favorite book. I just appreciate it all. 
Okay, well, mm. uh, let's see some of the books that you are recommending mm. us. So we asked you to choose like a book you would recommend to young children. Yes. Um, can you tell us what the book is? Yeah, so I chose Stand Up Yumi Chung um, by an author called Jessica Kim. She is a Korean-American author. Uh, and this this book is hilarious. It's about an 11-year-old girl who uh-huh. wants to be a stand-up comedian. Uh-huh. Except her parents won't let her. So it's yeah. her journey of finding her voice and finding her presence. Um, um, and it is full of jokes and it's delightful and it's warm and it's wonderful. Oh, it looks really entertaining, mm-hmm. even the cover. And she's also a Korean author? Korean American, yeah. Korean American, wow, okay. And a book that comforted you and boosted your self esteem when you were having a hard time? Yes. Okay, this one's called The Space Between Here and Now by Sarah Sook, a Canadian, a Korean Canadian author. Uh huh. This book is so poignant and beautiful it's about a girl who has this condition Mm. where she travels back in time Mm -hmm. she can't control it and she can't change the things that happen Mm. but she just gets essentially lost in these memories it's called like time warp syndrome Um, and she can't come back until the memory releases her Mm. Um, And it's this beautiful story about a girl um, reconciling her relationship with her dad and then in the process finding herself. It's a beautiful book. Oh, wow. When did you read this? Do you remember when you read it? So Sarah Sook is a very good friend of mine. And so I read this very early in the early stages. Um, But I believe it was published either this year or just last year so it's a very oh, new a book. recent mm. book oh i see i see um and another easy to read book that will make you lose track of time this is for me i need this like <laughs> easy to read but yep. also interesting yes well this one is called the no family by grace k shim mm-hmm. another korean american author um, and this one is, is one of those, it feels like a K-drama. It looks like yeah, a K-drama, the cover. It feels like what? it. So this girl, um, she she, reali- she she lives in America, uh-huh. but she realizes that her family are actually from this huge fashion tebo oh. in Korea. Uh-huh. <laughs> and she goes, and it's like a DNA test that uh, um, allows her to realize this hidden part of her family history. Uh-huh. Um, it just, it reads like a K-drama. It's easy and it's fun. And you just like flick the pages, keep you know, until the very end. It's it's so much fun. Oh my gosh. Is that like the mother-in-law or something on top? She looks very I mean. she's the harmony. Oh, she's the yeah, harmony. Okay, okay, sorry, so. honey, money. She, yeah. <laughs> she looked a little mean. <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, in K dramas, there's always that there's mean always mother-in-law. One. Always. Like, oh, okay. The No Family. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and a book that you must read before 2024 ends. Okay, so this one is called Skype. It's the Whoa. first book in a trilogy. Uh-huh. Uh, it's by Neil Schusterman, and it's a very well-known book, but I only recently read it, and I was blown away. So the concept is this world in which people don't die anymore. So what? medicine has so improved that no one dies. Uh-huh. And so these people, these scythes, like a tosung sata, like they come and they choose people to end their lives. They call it gleaning because people don't die, yeah. and there's only a finite number of resources in the world. So it's <gasps> this fascinating world um i was just gripped and the other thing that i found really interesting about this is there's like this there's no governments anymore there's no yeah there's like no real countries anymore Uh but there is an ai there is like this intelligent ai i I know (laughs) who is almost like a benevolent god oh and this it's fascinating so okay so the ai is a good person Good in good, this good in the story. Okay, yes. that's good. That's good to hear. Okay, and last but not least, a fun book to read twice or th- even thrice. Uh huh. This, this is called Soulmates. Uh huh. Looks by like another K drama. It is also Susan is also Korean American. She actually is in Seoul right now. Oh. Uh, and this is so fun. Uh, it's a rom com. And it's about this girl who has, uh, she's from America, mm-hmm. uh, and her childhood best friend has moved away to Korea and she mm-hmm. loses touch with him. Mm-hmm. And then she meets him again later mm-hmm. when she's a teenager. And he's turned into the hugest K pop star. <laughs> <laughs> Why are all the books about Koreans? Like, 
either Tebar or K-pop star. It's hilarious. Um, okay. It's such a fun read. Um, Susan writes with such humor. She's mm-hmm. a very witty writer. Um, and so it's definitely one of those books you can just keep reading and reading. Wow. Thank you so much mm. for the recommendations. Right. Uh, besties, make sure to add them to your to read list. Um, yeah, she you can also you have to check out her books of course and go follow her on her social media uh, at Gracie Kim writes and she also has her webpage graciekim.com mm-hmm. please go check it out yes oh you said you're working on another book I right am. it's a, it's going to be a series it's the first book so the first book comes out next year in 2025 mm-hmm. but it's the beginning of a series yes <gasps> is it going to be fantasy yeah. yes can I tell you about it? Yes, <laughs> okay. please so do. I'm so excited if you can tell. Uh, <laughs> it's called Dream Slinger. Dream Slinger. Dream Slinger. You know how like gunslingers yes. in like country westerns, but uh-huh. Dream Slinger. And it's kind of a mashup between, do you know X-Men? X-Men? X-Men. You know oh, the X-Men. X- yeah, Sorry. X-Men. Yeah, X-Men. <laughs> That's my accent. <laughs> X-Men. Men. Yes. Oh. Um, it's like the X-Men meets Pokemon. Oh. If Professor X from the X-Men oh. was a Korean king mm-hmm. and if magic came from our dreams. So it's this world in which a subsection of the population is born with a genetic mutation. Wow. That allows them to do strange things. Like they'll have a nightmare and when they wake up from their nightmares, there's fire or ice or poison or mm. wind that shoots up from their hands. Mm. And so they're very hated really and despised by public because they're dangerous. Yeah. But there are these annual Dream Slinger trials in the royal kingdom of Hanguk, oh. which is a fictional place where mm-hmm. there is still a Korean royal family. Mm-hmm. And they train these dream slingers to be able to access their magic and it's about a girl who is from the US but has to go to these trials and she learns about her family history, these shocking secrets about Mm. dream slingers history um, and in doing so finds out about herself. But I'm very excited. Children are going to love it. It's a combination of like their favorite things, X-Men and Pokemon. Uh, How can they not love it? I hope they will but you know I can just only work hard to make the story the best it can be and then I'm just so excited to share it because there's going to be a whole program for mm. I'm going to create a dream slinger league so wow. so readers can join me um right. to join an email you know subscriber list and we're going to have lots of fun lots and lots of fun how do you even come mm. up with these <laughs> how do you, where do you get the idea I think I live with one foot in the real world and one foot in my imaginary world. Mm. So maybe that's why. That's that's mm. the most important thing, but also that's the hardest thing. Mm. You're <laughs> doing amazing. Thank you so much. Man. I can't wait. I mm. can't wait either. Um, mm. Before we say goodbye, do you have anything you want to say to all the book lovers and readers out there? Oh. Yes. Should I say it to you or should I say it to the... Oh, you can say it to the camera. Oh, hello. Okay. (laughs) I would honestly just love to say to all readers out there that magic is all around you. And magic especially is inside you. So no matter how difficult your day is, no matter what hardships you may be facing in your life, just remember that we are made of the same stuff as the stars. We are made of stardust. And that means we are made of magic. So just remember that um, and keep your eyes open for the wondrous, most magical things that exist in our everyday world. Oh, thank you. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> oh, I am inspired by today's interview and I'm so happy I got to meet you. And Me I hope you have the best time with your family in Jeju. I hope your daughter loves Korea so she can she have does. you come back more often mm-hmm. with her. Um, it is already time to say goodbye, so... Yes, please come back. Thank you so much for having again. me. Yes. It's been an absolute blast. For yeah. me too. Uh, we're going to say goodbye with the last song. Tanabi's Kumga, Tekwa, Himga, Pyok, Dreams, Books, Power, and Walls. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Tongue 
난 너를 불러봤자 누군가에겐 소음일 테니 목 담은 입 그새로 삐져나온 모잘 것 없는 나의 한숨에 나 들으라고 내쉰 숨이 더냐 아버지 내게 물으시고 제발 저러는 답할 수 없었네 책과 힘과 벽 사이를 눈치 보기에 바쁜 나날들 소년이여 야망을 가져라 무책임한 겪은 따위에 저 바다를 호령하는 거야 차관이 없다 수 없음을 알게 되던 날 두드러기처럼 꽂은 심술이 끝내 그 이름 더럽히고 말은 